you found a great deal, it pencils out, and now you have to raise equity from investors. But how do you structure everything? What's the best way to do it? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how you can efficiently raise that capital and set up your syndication the right way. So make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss more videos on building wealth through multifamily real estate. I'm Seth Ferguson. Let's get right into it and talk about how to structure a multifamily syndication. Let's start off with the basics. You have found a property. This is the property right here. It's a good deal. You know how to make money with it. It hits all your return targets, but you don't have the equity needed to take this deal down on your own. So you have to go out and raise private equity from investors. But what is the most efficient way? What is the most efficient structure to do that? Well, this is how we come to the topic of syndication. Syndication is an incredibly efficient way to raise large amounts of capital and deploy it in a deal such as a multifamily real estate deal. Uh, hence the uh, multifamily real estate channel that you're on right now. So let's walk through the basics of syndication and then we'll talk about the structuring side. So in a syndication, we have two sides. We have the GP and the LP. The GP, the general partnership, is the active party in the deal. And then the LP, the limited partnership, is the passive investor or are the passive investors in the deal. This could be one person, this could be many. Because what happens is we have uh, many investors out here who have the capital. And uh, I'll put a link right up here to a video I did um, explaining the real estate matrix. The real estate matrix is basically the four components every single real estate deal must have for a deal to happen. And capital is one of those pieces. And this is what the passive investors, the limited partnership bring to the equation. So we have lots of high net worth individuals out there who do uh, extremely well uh, in their chosen career, uh, whatever that is but they don't have the real estate experience. They don't have the real estate knowledge. They don't have the team, the track record, the time. So it, it makes far more sense for them to invest their money passively in a deal, get all the benefits, but still focus on what their number one focus is instead of starting a real estate business or managing real estate uh, from scratch or just taking up a whole lot of time. It, it's not very efficient to do for these people. So what they do is they invest their capital into a limited partnership which is controlled by the general partnership. And this is the entity that controls the real estate. This is syndication in a nutshell. But like I teased in the beginning, how do you structure a syndication? What goes into it? Well, this is what we'll cover right now. The first thing you need to consider is who or what is going to make up the general partnership. Now, the general partnership could be a single person or it could be a group of people, a group of companies. It doesn't really matter. But when we're talking about larger real estate deals, larger multifamily deals, it's very unlikely that one person is going to do all, wear all the different hats that the general partnership needs to wear. So step number one in how to structure your syndication, structure your general partnership with the right people on the team. Uh, so if we're dealing with a 200 unit uh, property, uh, we're going to need a number of different people. We'll need people who specialize in raising capital. We'll need people who specialize in construction if there's a big renovation component there. We'll need people who specialize in the, the market, the boots on the ground. We also need people who can manage the property all these people, we need all these skill sets together in the general partnership. So the passive investors, the people who wanna invest their money, uh, feel confident uh, in the general partnership's ability to actually uh, make this deal happen and earn the returns that uh, you have advertised. So how does the general partnership, how is that uh, created? Who gets all the splits? Well, this all depends on what people are bringing to the table and how you as the general partnership decide to structure things. So I mentioned uh, capital. Uh, I mentioned uh, construction. Uh, management. All these different things are useful to the general partnership. With, without capital, the deal doesn't happen. Without construction, without renovations, the deal doesn't happen. Without active management, the deal doesn't happen. Uh, without actually the deal itself, the deal doesn't happen. Uh, many different syndicators uh, or general partners uh, use their own formula or formulae uh, to decide on how the general partnership is divvied up. Because uh, let's use this pie chart here. Let's just draw right here. Uh, Triceratops uh, disappeared today. Uh, my, my son didn't have any new drawings. Uh, so let's say this is 100% of the general partnership. You may decide that a quarter of the GP is allocated to capital. 
maybe a quarter is allocated to management. And again, I'm, I'm just uh, using uh, very rough numbers here. Uh, maybe a quarter is a construction, and then maybe a quarter is going uh, to uh, boots on the ground and whoever found the deal. This could be an example of how the general partnership is split up. Uh, now let's move over to the limited partnership. How is the limited partnership uh, divvied up? Uh, let's say there's 100 investors. Uh, does every investor get, uh, get one share? Uh, how is this all split? Well, it's all proportionate to the amount of capital being raised. So let's say very, very easy numbers. Let's say $100,000 is being raised. Uh, and what investor A brings $10,000 and everybody else brings uh, $1,000 each. Uh, we, we have a, all, a whole bunch of investors. Well, investor A would actually have 10% of the shares of the limited partnership uh, because they're bringing 10% of the capital required uh, for the limited partnership. So uh, we'll draw the chart here. So you'll have like 10% here for investor A and then B, everybody else will have their own uh, chunks depending on uh, proportionate to the amount of capital they are bringing. The syndication is controlled through shares. So what happens is the general partnership are allocated, it's typically uh, class A shares, and these shares have voting rights. The limited partnership is assigned shares. Uh, this could be B shares, B shares, C shares, depending on how you uh, want to structure it. Uh, let's call them C shares or C class shares. And these are non-voting. The reason the, these are non-voting is the limited partnership affords protections to the investors uh, for them being totally passive in the investment, for not being actively involved. Their risk, uh, their, uh, risk uh, liability, uh, their risk exposure is limited uh, through the limited partnership, uh, which is where the name comes from. Uh, where the name comes from, the limited partnership. On the GP side, we have voting shares, and this is how the general partnership uh, make decisions about the property. Now, uh, remember how I said this is how the general partnership is divvied up? You have to pay very close attention to this because if one person controls 66% of the general partnership, or 51%, however, however you structure it, if they have a majority, uh, then they basically have control of the investment. So you wanna make sure the person who's calling the shots or who has the majority in the general partnership uh, is the person you want uh, with their hand uh, at the tiller steering the ship. You really have to pay careful attention to this and make sure you're bringing on the right people to the general partnership team. So let's uh, do some erasing here because the whiteboard is getting messy as is uh, want to happen uh, quite often with my videos here. I'm working on my uh, writing skills to make it a little bit more clear, but uh, it's not going so good. So, okay. So we've got uh, shares assigned to the general partnership. We've got, uh, uh, we've covered shares for the limited partnership, totally passive. They can't be involved in uh, actively running the deal. They can't be making suggestions. They can't be visiting the property, telling property management what to do uh, because that would jeopardize the limited nature of the limited partnership. So how does everybody get paid? So this is an, also a very important piece in structuring your syndication. Um, the, the splits and how profits are distributed, uh, that's going to really impact the investors, that's going to impact you as a general partner. You want to be incentivized, the investors want you to be incentivized, but the investors also want to hit their return targets. So how do you make this happen? Well, this is where preferred returns and waterfalls come into play. So I'll put a link right up here to a video I did explaining all about waterfalls, and I'll also put a link right up here to a video I did explaining preferred returns. A preferred return in a nutshell is basically a hurdle that the deal has to hit before the general partnership can participate in the profit. So let's say it's a 6% preferred return, also called a pref return. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll hear uh, that uh, thrown out a lot. So let's say this deal is uh, performing under 6%. The general partnership cannot participate in the profits and the profits are distributed uh, usually through what's called a split. And a split, uh, it could be you know 60-40 in favor of the uh, limited partners. It could be 70-30, uh, it could be 80-20. Depending on the deal, depending on the situation, depending on the sponsor, the general partner, it can be a whole lot of different things. So what a preferred return means is you're really giving preferred equity to the limited partnership. I'll put a link right up here to a video I did explaining 
all about the capital stack, which is where this ties in. Um, but uh, with preferred equity, with the preferred return, the deal must hit that target of 6% uh, before the general partnership can participate in their, uh, let's say it's a 70-30 split, uh, then their split uh, kicks into effect uh, once that 6% is reached. If the deal doesn't hit 6%, well, guess what? The general partnership is not participating in the profits, even though fees are paid. And speaking of fees and how everybody else gets paid, this is where your PPM, your OM come into play. It will lay out all the risks of the deal. It will lay out uh, what happens when, uh, worst case scenarios, how things are uh, getting paid out. So a general partnership, and I'll put a link right up here to a video I did explaining all about how general partnerships get paid. And I'll also put another link to the video explaining how limited partnerships get paid because there's different ways. We have distributions, we have capital events, all that sort of stuff, which kind of falls outside uh, the purview of this video. So in your PPM or your OM, your private placement memorandum or your offering memorandum, you're going to lay out things like uh, fees. Fees are one way that general partners get paid. You'll also lay out the split, any uh, waterfalls or hurdles. I should have just drawn a picture of a waterfall. There we go. Uh, waterfalls, hurdles that, that are going to be involved in the deal. And when you're structuring your syndication, you have to make sure that uh, the terms you're offering are attractive to investors. You can't uh, skew all the terms so it's only benefiting the general partnership because nobody will want to invest with you. So you have to make sure, uh, and the market is competitive, so you have to make sure that the investors are attracted by you know, the preferred return you're offering, the splits are attractive, uh, the terms, uh, you know, if they can sell their shares at any given point in time, or what happens if they need out of the deal. All these things come into investor-friendly terms and you always wanna make sure that your interests as a general partner are in line with that of the limited partnership. This is why we have preferred returns and waterfalls to make sure that if the deal's performing, the general partnership gets paid and the investors are happy because they're uh, they're earning their expected returns. But if the deal's not performing, uh, you know the the investors will not want that general partnership to uh, to eat away at their returns uh, until the deal gets turned around. So once you, you've got your PPM, your OM, uh, you've laid everything out, and if an investor is interested in investing in your deal. Uh, you have something called a subscription agreement. And the subscription agreement is really the agreement uh, in which the investor agrees to purchase X amount of shares in the limited partnership in exchange for their investment, their equity uh, that's coming into the deal. So depending on what the share price is and how many shares you're offering, that's a topic for another video. Every syndication is going to be set up a little bit differently, but uh, when it comes to subscription agreements, that's the final step. The investor signs that, they agree to purchase X amount of shares in exchange for their equity injection or their equity investment. And then all that happens at that point is the funds get wired into the bank account and the deal, the syndication, the entity gets funded and then you can then close on the deal. So we've just gone through a whole bunch of different stuff. I threw a lot of uh, things at you, but I gave you some good links to other videos where I go more in depth on specific topics. So if you're interested in learning more about syndication, multifamily investing, raising capital, uh, come out to the multifamily conference. Uh, go to multifamilyconference.ca. We have a terrific event lined up for 2022. We've got Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. Uh, Joe Fairley, so he controls over a billion dollars in multifamily real estate. Uh, Joel Block's coming in. So many great speakers all talking about uh, multifamily and how you can build your portfolio. And uh, join my free Facebook group, uh, link right down below. Great group of people, always happy to help. And uh, if you like this video, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. It really helps out the channel. Hit the like button too. And until next time, happy investing.